In learning objective four, we're going to investigate ways we can use these uh, very powerful equations pr uh, presented in this session to evaluate investments, like how much money do I need to invest today to become a millionaire, or a two millionaire, or a five millionaire? Uh, how much will it cost me to send my children to college some 28 or 30 years from now? How much uh, will I need to invest today to have enough money to pay for my college textbooks in two years? Again, we can use these very powerful uh, session five equations to help us evaluate these investments in our lives. Uh, very practical investments like sending your child to college. Um, you will need about $80,000. You estimate to send your child to college in eight years. You have about $35,000 saved up now. You can earn 20% per year. Um, will you make it if you aggressively invest that? That, that, that to me sounds like a high risk investment but uh, nevertheless, you think you can get that uh, sort of return over those years. Uh, again, future value equals present value times one plus R to the T, 35,000 times 1.2 to the eighth, and you're uh, all set with about $150,000. Again, understanding that you're taking on a significant risk investing your money at 20%. Now, we wanna look at the balance point. How about if I step back and took a little bit less risk, what rate would I just achieve my goal? Uh, same equation, future value 80,000 equals present value of 35,000 times one plus some rate to the uh, eighth, and I get uh, an answer of 10.88%. So I can step back, take on a much more conservative uh, investment um, profile, and still reach that $80,000 goal. College is very expensive. We have to start saving early. Now let's get some real numbers. Um, and let's think about uh, if you're a 21 year old currently, if you're not, again, if you're not 21, pretend you are. Uh, Penn State, as an example, costs 25,000 per year full cost in state. So in state tuition plus room and board plus fees and books and things like that are estimated at approximately $25,000 per year uh, currently. Uh, the, our board of trustees can keep uh, price inflation to just about 5% per year. And the question is, how much will it cost you to send your child to Penn State sometime in the future. Now let's pretend we have a child at age 30, you're well established in the working world, you have a good salary, you have a nice home, your cars are paid off and so on. Now it's time to uh, start looking at uh, having children and then 18 years later those children will uh, go to college. What will Penn State cost for your child's first year? A very practical example because you need to start thinking about how much you want to start saving for this child uh, who's gonna, who, that we're going to have in about nine years. So again, future value equals present value times one plus R to the T. So I would take uh, 25,000 times 1.05 to the 27th power. 25,000 times 1.05 to the 27th power. That's nine years till I have the child plus 18 years till that child goes to college and I get an answer of about $93,000 per year. 93, almost $100,000 per year. If you want to benchmark, use 100. Uh, how long does your average child go to college these days? Four to five years. So we're talking about half a million dollars approximately if all these givens come to bear. Um, and then what will happen if your child decides to go to uh, an Ivy League school, a Harvard, a Cornell, a Penn, or other prestigious uh, private university? Again, you can calculate that using the present value, future value equation. Uh, here's a re another retirement example. You want to retire in 50 years as a millionaire. Uh, let's say in this case you're 15 and you decide to start saving early and uh, you want to retire when you're 65. You have $10,000 invested. Um, what rate must you invest it to get there? Again, it's very similar to the who wants to be a millionaire example, except in that case we started later at age 21. This time you have uh, 50 years to invest it and you can only start out with uh, $10,000, and so you need to earn a rate of about 9.65% to get there. So all these examples are very, very practical. You can see using a lump sum uh, that you deposit now, getting to some future value. Uh, you've been saving up to buy the Godot company. Total cost will be 10 million bucks. You currently have uh, 2.3 million. At 5%, how long will you have to wait? At 16%, how long will you have to wait? So in this case, we're solving for the T variable, the time. Uh, in the first example, present value, in both examples, present value is 2.3 million, future value is 10 million, and the only difference is the rate. So on the left, we have a rate of 5%. On the right, we have a rate of 16%. You can see that you must uh, save up and leave the money in the bank for 30 years at 5% uh, interest rate, 
and uh, only about 10 years <clears throat> at a 16% interest rate. So one formula, very, very simple, and you can just uh, solve for the other three, vari any three variables, uh, any, any one variable, I mean, if you have g three given. So I can solve for future value if I'm given present value R and T, I can solve for present value if I'm given future value R and T, and so on. Uh, find any one variable if given the other three. Again, this is one of the most powerful concepts in uh, corporate finance and in personal finance. Future value equals present value times one plus R to the T. In summary, in session number five, you learned some very powerful concepts on present value, future value, uh, percent R, also known as compound annual growth rate, and time. Uh, these are some of the most powerful, uh, great underlying rules of finance. Uh, we learned about future value and compounding, present value and discounting, the rule of 72, the very powerful rule of 72, and how we can use these equations to help us evaluate investments in our daily lives. I hope you enjoyed session five of Introduction to Finance.